Hello and welcome to another episode of the Devlog of Runes of Ariel. Today we're going to talk about the card rearranging process. So in order to let you see what I mean exactly by that, um, I will be um, starting a little battle here. Fight! And now you can see um, that these cards here at the bottom, there are five cards, are rearranged nicely in an arc, like if you were holding it in your hand. Um, and if extra cards come into here, there will be uh, these cards will become uh, placed slightly uh, closer to one another. And also, um, if for example I play a, a, a hand where I play a card where another card needs to be discarded, let's do this one for example, you see that this uh, also changes, that this uh, position changes a bit more up and they widen a bit more to see exactly which card uh, can be discarded. And when you discard it, uh, these uh, cards become. Uh, smaller again and they are more to the bottom so exactly how does this work uh, how is this uh, positioned so um, let's close this up and essentially uh, there is a command function that does that there's a command function fn underscore rearrange which is uh, triggered by issuing a command to the command functions uh, to rearrange the cards and actually in the background the re rearrangement happens all the time so when a card goes out of your hand or comes into your hand it's immediately rearranged um, that's because this is um, in that command queue and every time it's needed it's going to be issued the command is going to be issued so for more details on the command queue and how exactly that works i kindly refer to another video in the video series on runes of Ariel where I explain in detail what the command queue is and how that works. But know that um, uh, commands in uh, Runes of Ariel um, are issued inside of a queue so that um, every command can run its course and only when it's done, something else can happen in a sequence. Um, that's to make it easier uh, to sequence things in, in these kind of card games that, for example, sometimes you need to play car, uh, need to play cards, the card needs to be put away on the deck, there needs to be an animation that's played, you need to get extra health or deduct health, stuff like that, all in a sequence. And in order to do that, not all simultaneously, this happens through a command queue. So one of these commands that can be issued is to rearrange the cards. And actually, this is done here. And the only thing it does basically is call this function rearrange cards. And then we come into uh, this uh, little function here. So this little function, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, neat. And that way that it goes and uh, passes a mode, a rearrange mode into the function and that uh, rearrange mode is going to be either a battle mode which means that the cards will be at the bottom of the screen like you're holding them in your hands or the arrange, uh, arrange mode can be discard and that means that the cards should be a bit more up into the screen and should be a bit more wider. Um, so depending on this rearrange mode, this logic will be a little bit different. So what we do, actually, we've got a, a, a number of local variables we use here to do that logic. Uh, what we do is we pick all of the cards uh, where the current deck equals T. That means T means that they are on the table. So whenever a card is dealt to the table, to the hand of the player, um, actually the, the current deck is set to T. So we are all picking those. We should pick those that are not currently being destroyed because if a card is currently being destroyed because it needs to be removed from the deck for example it shouldn't be rearranged of course and also it should also not be the card which is being dragged right now so if a rearrangement is called while we're dragging a card that card would have the behavior to always be pulled down into your hand while it's dragging and that's not very nice of course so we should also exclude the drag it card 
then only if we are in a battle mode of battle or discarding and in what battle mode is is part of another video essentially it tells the game what is currently happening inside the game and uh, what mode we are in in order to activate or deactivate certain logic so whenever we are battling or we are discarding something uh, only then do we need to do uh, this entire rearrangement process so the first thing we do is re we retain a variable called num cards. This is the number of cards that was picked here in this uh, picking action. And then we need to determine the area in which we are, are to spread the cards out from left to right. So to determine that, uh, I do a calculation being the width of the cards uh, plus the number of cards we have plus one to make it wide enough, times uh, the width of the cards divided by 8, multiplied by, and then 5 or 8. So if it's battle, it means they need to be closer to one another. So we only multiply by 5 to make it a bit narrower. Um, otherwise, we uh, multiply by 8 to make it a bit wider and the area is or, or to which the cards are attributed uh, is a bit larger that's what happens here so we determine an area width and from that area width knowing how big the area needs to be in order to be uh, displaying the cards nicely we need to determine the first position starting from the left where the first car first cards need to, needs to appear and this we store in the left x variable so this is uh the hand point x and the hand point actually is uh, this point here this is the hand point this is a point it's just a, an invisible placeholder uh, for the logic to know where the hand of the player approximately is it can be a bit more to the left up and right i experimented a bit and this is the ideal place according to me um, so if we then continue we pick that hand point as being the middle and then we subtract the area width divided by two so we go the full the, the half of the area width to the left and then we add half of the card width to the right again so because the origin point of a card is slack in the middle and because it's smack in the middle we need to add half of that uh, card width again uh, a little bit to the right then the logic actually is a bit different if the cards are even or odd if they are even suppose there are four cards an even number of cards uh, there are two cards being slightly left from the middle and two cards slightly right from the middle but suppose there are five an odd number the middle card is exactly in the middle straight not in an uh, in an angle uh, the other ones need to be in an angle so it really depends if it needs to be straight uh, the middle card needs to be straight yes or no depends on the number of cards if it's eat even or odd so that's why we have this even variable and then we need to determine which card should be the middle card and that middle card uh, is determining uh, what uh, what that rotation should be actually so then we uh, if it's even then we take the ceiling of the number of cards divided by two else we take the floor of the number of cards uh, divided by two now for each of the cards here and uh, we order by the x uh, value ascending we go from left to right actually and we start by setting a temporary y and a temporary x variable so we start if the rearrange mode is battle so if the cards are more to the bottom of the screen we set the y to the hand point else we deduct 200 from the y point to make it a bit more higher that's all and from the x for the x we start from the left x we determine there and we add i times the card width divided by 8 times the rearrange mode battle uh, 5 or 8 so this is again this uh, a fraction uh, either 8 by 8 or 8 by 5 so and then we set two initial variables here uh, the temp y is a temporary variable where we start by setting the y coordinate uh, to either the hand point y or a hand point y minus 200 so when we're battling the hand point should be exactly the hand point but when we're discarding a card the hand point should be 200 pixels higher and then in regards to the 
x coordinate, we start from the left x we determine there, and we uh, add i times this fraction. And this fraction is depending on the car width divided by 8 times normally 8 for discarding, but 5 for battling. So this i is an iterator here which is set to zero by default. So as we start the loop here, this for each loop, it will be zero. And each time we loop through, one will be added. So as the first one is zero, it will be zero times this value. So the first temp x will be left x. So as uh, i increases, this uh, fraction will always be added to that temp x. But then, uh, if we don't do anything, that will be nicely one next to the other. But that's not exactly what we want. We want it in kind of an arch. So to do that arch, we need to first set the rotation. And if we set that rotation in order to be for them to be nicely stacked and not weirdly stacked, yeah, uh, we need to adjust slightly the temporary x and temporary y coordinates as well to make it more beautiful. So that's what this middle logic does. So it is a distinction between even cards and odd cards. And left of the middle, we uh, do a little left rotation. We do the middle card minus i times rotation times minus 1. So again, this i is an iterator. We start from the middle card and we count 1 downwards. We add rotation which is just some number I added here. I chose 5. I could tweak that, of course. And we multiply by one, minus 1 to make it uh, rotate uh, to the left. And here we don't do that. Uh, here we don't do that if it's to the right or equal to the middle card. Um, and then for the temp y, we add again a formula based on the iterator here, uh, times the y offset and here for x we do the same with x offset and x and y offset are two uh, variables here i defined 32 and 5 again here we can tweak that a little bit uh, to make the cards appear in our hands a little bit tighter or not um, so these temporary values are added to the temp x we started off here so it's actually a correction on this. This sets the value standard. And here we can correct it a little bit depending on which card in the loop we are now placing. And at the end of the end of the loop, actually, we increase i to have the next card evaluated. And we store the original rotation x and y. And because uh, when we hover over the card, the x and the y are changed a bit and the rotation as well. And when we stop hovering, it should revert back to the original rotation x and y. So that's uh, why we retain that. And also what we do then uh, is uh, we rearrange the cards uh, to go into that position, temp x and temp y, uh, in 0.1 seconds. But as you can see here, um, uh, we depending on uh, the battle mode and the number of cards, we call the tag something else. If it's uh, battle, then we do this. If it's not battle, it means it's discard, and then we just call this selection. But if it's if you're battling, there's two different things going on. Either the card is the last card. And then we call it reposition last, and or it is not the last card, and then we just call it reposition. The reason why we do that is because there is also another um, another tween here that says uh, when the tween reposition last is called, and the number of cards to be drawn is not zero, and we're drawing cards, we need to draw card one more card. So one, once we start drawing cards. And we draw five cards, for example. The first card is drawn, and then this reposition is called. And it does that reposition for one card. Then this is called for one card, and it's immediately the last one because it's i will be zero and zero will be zero, and then we have uh, we call the reposition last. Does the tag is reposition last? So this is called. And then we see, okay, there, there is more cards to be drawn. There were five and there's only one. 
So then what happens is we queue the command again, and then there will be a second card on the table. So this picking will be done, and there will be two cards on the table. This loop will be performed twice, and only in the last one, again, will be a reposition last. The first one, it will be a reposition. So if you were not to do that, if you were not to segregate the reposition and the reposition last, this would be called twice with two cards, three times with three cards, four times with four cards, and that would be a mess, of course. So we need to make a distinction between we are tweening the last card or tweening the first card. Uh, and whenever that's done, a next card can be drawn if necessary. So that the result of that actually is very nice and that lets you see immediately, uh, let me start the sandbox here again, that immediately lets you see how that works, or what that does. If we were to slow it down a bit, you would see that the first card is drawn. Let's see, the first card is drawn smack in the middle. The second is drawn a bit to the right, the third one is drawn a bit, bit to the left, the fourth one is drawn a bit to the right, etc. So this uh, makes it so that whenever the cards are drawn, they are drawn nicely and they will split up nicely as the cards are drawn. And that is entirely because of this reposition logic, that it only repositions once the last card has been uh, drawn, that it only draws a new card once the last card is being repositioned of the former number of cards. It's a bit hard to explain, but basically that's it. Um, and then we just between the angle, of course, to a rotation also in 0.1 seconds. And then we wait a little bit because uh, then we need the, um, let's say, the uh, the tick, or the next tick of the engine to, to uh, that needs to happen to see uh, everything nicely um, and then we move the cards just to the top of the layer so they uh, will get stacked nicely on top of each other. Um, then what we do is if the menu is visible we disable all of the cards and if we're rearranging the battle we're only if we're rearranging in battle mode so not in discard mode we discard the, the card only if the card cost is higher than the energy one else zero. So in this card mode it's never disabled and if we're in battle mode it's only disabled if the card's energy is too high. So that is exactly what it does. So that I hope that was a bit enlightening on how that arching works uh, of the cards. Uh, as always please like, please subscribe and if you want the full source code of this game make sure to support me on my Patreon page. The link is in the description.